the change in the architecture of the media is completely connected to a change in the architecture of control. You know, with the broadcast system, you have one person in one station deciding what gets put over the airwaves. When you have a distributed network like the internet, everybody can be a server. There's no distinction between the broadcaster and the receiver. Every computer does both. You know, you can take your home laptop and run a server off of it that can distribute movies and music and web pages and email in the same way that the biggest computers at Google can. There's no fundamental difference between the computers they have in the racks in their server rooms and what you have on your desk. In the old system of broadcasting, you're fundamentally limited by the amount of space in the airwaves. You know, you could only send out 10 channels over the airwaves of television, right? Or even with cable, you had 500 channels. On the internet, everybody can have a channel. Everyone can get a blog or a MySpace page. Everyone has a way of expressing themselves. And so what you see now is not a question of who gets access to the airwaves. It's a question of who gets control over the ways you find people. You know, you start seeing power centralizing in sites like Google, these sort of gatekeepers that tell you where on the internet you want to go, the people who provide you your sources of news and information. So it's not, you know, only certain people have a license to speak. Now everyone has a license to speak. It's a question of who gets heard, who gets heard. So one of the biggest questions we're facing is in a world of a million speakers, how do you find what's good? Are we going to go to a system like the old media where you go to CNN and they pick a handful of people to focus on and you read what they say? Or are we going to go something more like the internet where everybody has a chance at being heard, a more democratic system? One of the most interesting technologies for doing something like that is a system called collaborative filtering where everybody expresses their opinions on what they like and what they don't like and the computer tries to match you up with other people who have similar preferences and recommend you things that they also like that you didn't know about before. It's the same kind of system you see on Amazon with people who bought this book also bought this book. People are trying to experiment that not just with books but with blogs and with web pages and news stories all across the internet to try and find ways of things you never would have heard of before and bringing them in front of you. Well, mass media had this fundamental paradox because it was aiming at a huge audience but it wanted to convince everybody they were an individual so you see all these ads on television all the time, like, you know, buck the trend, buy these jeans, right? And it's on a show that four million people are watching. You know, you're not going to buck a trend by doing the same thing four million other people are. Now that the internet is actually making these niche things possible, you know, the mass media is incredibly threatened. You know, no longer this idea of bucking the crowd and being your own is, you know, it's no longer just a theory. You can actually do it on the internet. And what we're starting to see is tools that take power away from these big conglomerates and start to distribute it to small groups. And so there are a bunch of issues in, in a system like that. There are questions of funding, you know, how will these small groups get paid? How will the random blogger be able to live, you know, in a way that an investigative journalist can now because there's one giant source of advertising? You know, there are questions of finding people. You know, how will I be able to find the stuff I'm interested in, the stuff that's trustworthy and reliable? And so for each of these, you know, there are new technologies. People are trying all sorts of different things. And one of the most exciting things about the Internet is that there's experimentation in this. You know, since everybody can just go up and start a website with a new...